DW's Bastian Hartig joins us now from New York. Now, there was a quite heated debate during that session. Um, can you tell us more about that? Sure. It was definitely a heated debate in that session, Amy. And we heard the Secretary General, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, say that those attacks did not happen in a vacuum. What he also did say, though, is that nothing justifies those attacks, the uh, attacks, is terror attacks by Hamas on Israel that killed 1,400 Israelis. And he also said that he has in the past unequivocally condemned these attacks. Now, that's not what the Israeli foreign minister wanted to hear. What I believe what Antonio Guterres tried to do here is to toe a fine line, because I think we have to understand he is the head of an organization that comprises 193 member states. Now, quite frankly, there are quite a number of those states that do not take Israel's point of view. Now, if the Secretary General Guterres, if he had sided solely with Israel, then he would have risked uh, the credi credibility, his credibility with uh, those nations, and uh, that would have also eroded any influence that the United uh, Nations might have, because then those nations would have said, we always knew that the United Nations is a, an organization that is run by Western states and is solely there to further Western interests. So he tried to toe that line, because I think the common goal here is for many many of those speakers today in the Security Council, but many member countries as well, is to stop the civilian suffering that is happening in, uh, in, in Israel and that is happening in Gaza. In now, Germany's Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock was also there. She seemed uh, more reluctant to uh, offend Israel, but she did talk about the importance of protecting the UN Charter and international law. Let's have a listen to what she had to say. For Germany, Israel's security is non-negotiable. Like any other state in the world, Israel has a right to defend itself against terrorism within the framework of international law. Addressing the plight of the Palestinians is in no way contradicting this clear and unwavering stance. It is a key part of it. We can choose to see the conflict through our own eyes only, to give in to grief and anger, or we can move ahead together, small as our steps may be, so that Hamas can never again perpetrate such acts of terror. The rules of the UN Charter and the international humanitarian law should guide our work for a new tomorrow towards a meaningful peace process, allowing both Israelis and Palestinians to live side by side in peace and in security in two independent states, knowing that peace will only work if it works for everyone. Coming back to you, Bastian, what would you say that Baerbock's main message was there? Well, I think, first of all, she, of course, she said that it is hardwired into the German DNA and the DNA of the German state that Israel has a right to exist. It has a right mm. to self-defense. And she also condemned Hamas. Now, she is a proponent of what she calls and what many call feminist foreign policy. Now, that doesn't mean it has mainly to do with women, but it means it's a foreign policy approach that is one of empathy. And that's, I think, what what her main message was today. She said, we have to stand in each other's shoes. We heard her say, we can uh, choose to only see this from our point of view, but if we want to move on, then we have to see it from, from you know, our opponents, as it were, point of view as well, because she said everybody, uh, each one of those victims, be it on the Israeli side, be it on the Palestinian side, is someone's son, is someone's daughter, is someone's father or someone's mother. And she says we have to see, have to see that. And only if we do that can we move forward. And, uh, and only then can we achieve peace. Now, how that peace might look, nobody knows. Many people are speaking of uh, a two-state solution now, again, something that has long uh, been forgotten or not been talked about. Now it's on the table again, but honestly, nobody knows what path could lead to such a solution, Amy. And now the Security Council know about the notorious veto. Basically, if any of the permanent members disagree with something, they can block action. Um, so what can we actually expect from the Security Council here besides more deadlock? 
Right. So what we're hearing from diplomats here is that um, the U.S. and other countries are working on a new resolution that they might uh, propose tomorrow or maybe the day after, and then that will be voted on. We don't know how that vote's going to go. We hear that they are trying to get China and to get Russia to uh, to abstain fr um, fr from voting, and that maybe in that way uh, that resolution might pass. Now, I think that's a tall order. That's a long shot. We don't know if that's going to work. What we do know is that on Thursday, there's going to be a meeting of the General Assembly. Now, if the Security Council does not uh, does not achieve a resolution, cannot, uh, cannot vote for a resolution, then the General Assembly uh, will. That is not legally binding, uh, but it only requires uh, a simple majority. And uh, the, the possibility is, that's what we're hearing from diplomats here, is that such a resolution by the General Assembly will then be more on the Palestinian side than it will be on the Israeli side. But we have to wait and see what really comes out of all of this, Amy. Mm -hmm. DW's Bastian Hardig reporting from New York City. Thank you.